Perfect. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to welcome uh, to our webinar today uh, a gentleman who's been a, a fixture at a number of trade shows that we've attended through the years. Uh, a great opportunity to visit with him. Uh, Dale Willerton, uh, affectionately known as the lease coach in our industry, who's going to take some time today and walk us through um, the right approach to leasing space for your existing restaurant or your next restaurant. That's um, right. <laughs> you know, I think the, the, the first thing that comes to mind as, as we see what's going on in the world is as Amazon takes over Main Street, I think there's a, a wonderful opportunity today for restaurants to either find additional space for their existing concept, find expansion opportunities, et cetera, that never existed before. Um, I think we're going into a wonderful time uh, for restaurants to, as you call it, negotiate to win as they, uh, as they look for a new lease and an opportunity. So, Dale, well, if you could give us, give us a little background, I'll look forward to it. Well, thank you, Fred. You know, it, it was, I've been looking forward to this webinar for a long time because Total Foods is really one of my favorite magazines, and we bump into each other once in a while at all of these restaurant shows. And, right. And I've, I've got a real passion for training and helping and coaching the, the restaurant tenants across the country. So, you know, today we're, we're going we're gonna to focus on negotiating to win because the, the truth is, Fred, a lot of restaurant owners, they're, they're such nice people that they're simply negotiating not to lose. And, you know, you shouldn't aim for a tie. You should aim right. for a win. And that's what we're going to talk about. And, of course, you know, when I started the Lease Coach back in 1993, it was after I had had a full career working for landlords. I was a shopping center manager. I was a commercial leasing rep. It was my job to find tenants, you know, sign them up to leases, uh, manage them, collect the rent. And uh, unfortunately, if they didn't pay the rent, Fred, it was my job to evict them. So right. I spent a lot of years on the landlord side. And then in 1993, came to my senses, um, started the lease coach, uh, opened up offices uh, in quite a few different cities. Uh, what you see on your screen here is a picture of me speaking at the National Restaurant Show in Chicago, which is a sure. fantastic four-day event. But, Fred, you and I are no stranger to the, the shows that are up on the screen. We just yep. finished the California Restaurant Show. The, the Florida Restaurant Show has been rescheduled, which was, I think, a first about 16,000 right. people are going to be, you know, going in two weeks instead of uh, two weeks ago, thanks yep. to um, Hurricane Irma. And we've got the New York Restaurant Show coming up that I'll be speaking at. Now, Fred, you may not be aware of this, but approximately half of our clients are independent restaurant owners. They own one or two restaurants. It's their own brand. It's their own concept. Didn't know that. Half, always, thought it, yeah. always thought it was changed, really. So oh. that this surprised me. Half of our business is chains. It's it's franchises and and uh, you know often it's the franchisee coming to us saying, look, I just bought the rights to a certain territory. I want to open up five restaurants, and you know I've gone to Nashville to do you know real estate training for Dairy Queen, and I've done all the Baskin Robbins training through um, through California for Baskin right. Robbins franchisees. So it's a lot of fun working with the franchise chains. Now as a special uh, perk, anyone listening to today's webinar, if you've already registered for this webinar, that means you qualify to get a uh, complimentary autographed copy of our book mailed to you. That should come to you automatically, but if for some reason it doesn't, make sure you let us know and we'll get a copy of that book out to you. It's about 330 pages. You know, the challenge, Fred, with writing this book was that I had to write it in the four dummies format. Right. You know, it wasn't like I could just tell my story and you got it because you read it from front to back. The the average four dummies reader only reads 30 or 40 percent of the book. They read the uh -huh. sections that apply to them, but they get lots of value. You yep. see, so it's phenomenal because if you if your landlord's trying to charge you a great big deposit, you're going to want to read how to get your deposit back section. But if you're not paying a deposit, that section doesn't matter to you at all. So it's right. really it's really good that way from a book's perspective. 
Now today we're going to fo- we're going we're going to go for probably 35 or 40 minutes and we're going to talk about seven leasing tips every restaurant tenant needs to know. So I'm approaching this with the expectation that our average listener or watcher of this webinar Fred is an existing restaurant owner. I'm starting at that level. If you're if you haven't opened up your first restaurant yet, um you might feel like some of this is a little bit advanced, but sure. if you've got an existing restaurant, most of what I'm about to teach you is going to make sense. And we're going to focus a lot on strategy. So, number 1, tip number 1 regarding lease renewals. How far in advance to contact the landlord and what you should and should not say. So I recommend if, if we're if we're talking to existing restaurant owners who are facing lease renewals, lease renewal negotiations, typically you should be working about 12 months in advance. Now some leases have a renewal option clause, and and if if you have a renewal option clause that has to be exercised six months in advance, you should start six months before that. Okay, but okay. don't make don't make the assumption that the landlord's going to reach out to you. In most cases, it's the tenant that has to contact the landlord to talk about this, and this is where the tenant drops the ball. So, Fred, if, if, a, if a tenant is fake, let's say their lease is expiring in 10 months, they'll phone the property manager and they'll say something like this. They'll say, you know, I've been in this location for a long time. Um, we want to renovate the restaurant. We want to stay for five more years. We're going to add this to our menu. We're going to do this and this. You know, how do we how do we do a lease renewal? And the property manager automatically says to himself, "Kaching, kaching," because right. you just spilled the beans. You just right. told them you decided to stay. Yeah. So when the lease coach contacts a property manager. What we try to do is we try to make the landlord pursue you. And so it's really saying the right word. So I'll say to the property manager, you know, this tenant's been in this location for this many years. We're their consultants. We're working with them. And I'll say, Mr. Property Manager, do you think the landlord wants this restaurant to stay and renew Mm -hmm. their lease? Mm -hmm. And the property manager, you know, usually there's a little bit of a pause, and the property manager says, well, of course we want the restaurant to stay. They're not thinking of leaving, are they? Well, now they're pursuing you. So you let stay. them show you let them show their hand rather than your client showing his or her hand. That's right. Try to Got get it. because if, if they if they have other plans, they'll tell you. If they say you right. don't want a restaurant here anymore, or whatever. No. Um, but try to get them pursuing you, and and you can generally assume the landlord wants to keep their tenant. It's very expensive to replace a tenant. And so the 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 and, uh, and let's go back to what I just said, which is you know we are we see a significant decrease in the amount of retail opportunities on Main Street as a result of online shopping and things being eliminated. So the restaurant, you know, becomes uh, very important to that landlord. That's exactly right. And this kind of segues into tip number two, which is coming up on your screen, why you should not add automatically exercise your renewal option. Um, there's a bit of a myth, Fred. You may not be aware of this, but there's a bit of a myth that the only way to renew a lease is to exercise your renewal option, and that's simply not true. Not every tenant has a renewal option. Maybe they've used them or they never negotiated for one to begin with. But 98% of the time when the lease coach is hired to negotiate a restaurant lease renewal, 98% of the time we do not exercise the renewal option because the fine print in the lease agreement says the rent can only go up. I was going to say, else, so, yeah. Yeah, the one-way, else esca- is one-way escalation. That's right. And, okay. of course, we specialize in negotiating lease renewal rent reductions. Mm-hmm. So by exercising your renewal option, you've already tied one arm behind my back. It makes yep. it a lot more difficult. Yep. And it, it's it's perfectly legal and legitimate to you know, simply negotiate a lease renewal and, and to generate a lease renewal document without exercising your renewal option. Mm-hmm. So this is a this is a really important point to us. Now, tip number three, preparation strategies, including your homework list. Hmm. When I take on a new client, you know, I I will go and do some research on the Internet. I want to find out how big this landlord is, what kind of properties they own, who the people are, that type of thing. But I will also go so far as to speak with 
other tenants who are in the property. And I remember in one particular case, I flew out to a city to see one of my clients. And when I went to see her, the space right next door to her, Fred, was vacant. There was no tenant there. Right. But the next time when I went out to see her, not only was the space occupied, but the tenant was there. They were in business. And so right. I'm not shy or bashful. I took out my business card. I walked in to that tenant space, and I said, congratulations on your new location. And I said, I'm a consultant. My name is Dale Willerton. I'm working with one of your fellow tenants in the building on their lease renewal. I said, would you mind sharing with me how your experience was with this landlord, what kind of terms and deal you got with this landlord, because you obviously just signed a lease agreement a few months ago. And he, he paused, never having been asked that question, probably right, never right. asked again. He right. says, you know, he says, I'm pretty busy. He said, he, he reached under the counter, he pulled it out, handed it to me and said, look for yourself. Well, wow. I was able, I, you know, I said, thank you. And I took the lease agreement. I walked over to a quiet corner of the store. I was able to see how much rent he was paying, if he put mm-hmm. down a deposit, his personal guarantee. All of that information really helped me negotiate the lease renewal for my client who was next door because she was just coming off a 10-year term. Right. She hadn't right. done a deal with this landlord for nine years. So this information was really helpful. And tenants have to remember that. So I have to know, is he paying less or more, the new guy? That, that's right. That's right. Okay. And, and sometimes in a ten-year term, the landlord will turn over two or you know two or even three times. Like I'm in the lease coach in our in our recent office building. We've been here less than five years, and we're on our third landlord. Okay. So, you know, they, sometimes changes occur on the other side of it. Sure. And so you really want to get prepared, and you want to make a list of all the things that you're hoping to negotiate for, go back, review your lease agreement. Fred, you'd be surprised how often tenants don't remember when their lease agreement actually expires because right. they can't remember if it was when they signed the lease or when they opened the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Because that, you know, sometimes it takes three or four or five months to open that restaurant, right? Sure. So uh, sometimes the landlord has a different date than you. And I had one of my clients out of California. They were like 14 months off. They said, our lease expires on this date. I went to the landlord. The landlord says, no, it's 14 months after that. Wow. <laughs> they were they were shocked. Yeah. You know, they were shocked. So you've got to well, get hey, all your look, ducks in a it's, row. It's very easy to get busy doing, doing, doing every day. And, you know, this, like, right. this gets slipped under a cash register and you kind That's of forget right. about it. When I used to be a shopping center manager and I had 85 tenants in the property, yep. I knew what every single tenant was paying for rent, Fred, because I had that right. rent roll. Right. The tenant doesn't have that. Right. right? The, t- the tenant is really looking through a, a pretty narrow viewpoint. Absolutely. The landlord knows what everybody else is paying and when their leases are expiring. Yep. And if, if, uh, if your neighbor, you know, if you're going into a property because you want to be there and because there's a grocery store, you don't want to find out that six months after you open your restaurant, the grocery store moves out. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause you wanted that anchor to be there. Yep. So, all right, let's go on to tip number four, how to create competition for your tenancy so that you can reduce your rent. Now, this applies to whether you're negotiating on a lease renewal or whether you're negotiating on a brand new location. It's the same strategy here. And the strategy is to pretend you can't stay in your current location and find alternative locations. I remember uh, Vincent came to me. He had, this was his story, Fred. He, he had bought the business two years ago. Yep. He was paying $25 per square foot in rent. The landlord mm-hmm. wanted to raise it to $28 per square foot. Now, Vincent was, was doing the right thing. He had just attended one of my half-day workshops. But then he came up after the workshop, and he said, can you help me with this? I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit too close to it. I'm nervous. Right. And I said, well, you know, I can't guarantee you specific results, but I can mm-hmm. certainly get the job done for you. So sure. I said, Vincent, if you – had to move your business, where would you move to? He said, well, I'm not moving. I told you. I just bought it two years ago. I said, I yep. know, but if you did if move, you where would you move? Right. He said, I'm not moving, Dale. And yep. I, finally, the third time, he said, well, I guess I'd move to that plaza over there or that plaza down there. Right. That's what he said. Yep. I said, okay. So I'm going to approach those plazas. Yeah. And I'm let's going take to a, Let's if, take a walk. 
That's right. Yep. And, you know, both landlords wanted Vincent to move his business into their plaza. Mm-hmm. And so I got a proposal from both of them. Yep. And with that information in my briefcase, I was able to walk back into Vincent's business, into Vincent's landlord office and negotiate his lease renewal with confidence. Now, we didn't renew him at the 25 he was paying. We didn't renew him at the $28 per square foot the landlord had proposed. We renewed Vincent at $10 per square foot. <laughs> for eight years, and he was shocked. Yeah. That saved him twenty. His rent went down twenty five hundred dollars per month, and he said, yep. "Dale, how could they be that negotiable?" And I said, "Well, frankly, I'm surprised they were that negotiable too. Like I kind of, okay. I kind of smelled a victory, but yep. I didn't know it was going to be that victorious." Right. Just, and of course, he's hired us several times since then. And, I'll bet. And the, the the point is that you've got to, you've got to make the landlord work for your tenancy. Now, if we talk about you're open, let's say you're opening up a new location, and this one, a franchise. Someone buys a restaurant franchise, and they've got a territory. The mistake they make is that they, they fall in love with one location and forget to create any competition. They forget to pick decoy locations. And so they'll call me up and say, how come I'm not getting anywhere on this deal? And I'll say, how many sites are you negotiating on? And they say, just one. Mm-hmm. I say, well, you have no leverage. Right. You have no right. leverage, right? You, you've got to make the landlord earn or re-earn your tenancy, and so they kind of get that. But so it's like the, so like it's like the emotion needs to go from falling in love with a specific location. That same emotion has to be moved into creating competition with multiple uh, that's potential right. locations. And, 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 and look, it's hard for people to to, to grasp, but that's really mm-hmm. what this is. Even if you really, really, really love one location, you don't have to tell anybody that. And I, right. I kind of give, I give a bit of a warning that you know tenants should realize anything you share with the real estate agent is going to find its way to the landlord. Yeah. So be careful. It's only going to cost you. Mm-hmm. Nothing good's going to happen exactly. from it. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to number five. Whether to sure. involve a broker or an attorney. Yeah. So, quick tutorial. There's two types of brokers or agents. A broker and an agent, as you know, Fred, is pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. And if if you drive around town, like I'm going to be doing site selection for one of my clients in Tampa fairly soon. And so I'll drive around Tampa and I'll see four lease signs on various buildings and it will say four lease, call our real estate agent. That's the listing agent. Now, the listing agent has persuaded the landlord to give him the listing on the property. The landlord is going to pay a commission if the listing agent finds a tenant. And the landlord's expectation is the listing agent is working for him and will get him a high rent, a big deposit, a personal guarantee. After all, it's a $30,000, $40,000 commission. The landlord wants a good tenant, right, right? on a good term. So, but, so, so... I say to people. So what I like to work, call a he's going to negotiate a what we call a win lose deal. That's right. That's right. Okay. Now, if it, it, I when I give my seminars, I take a little survey and I say to the to the restaurant owners in the room, I say, if you were if you were having a legal dispute with your landlord, would you share their attorney or would you share their lawyer? And everybody, <laughs> of course, we wouldn't share their lawyer. And I say, well, why would you share their agent? Yeah. Why would you share the agent who has a four lease sign on the building? He, he's supposed to help the landlord. Now, so the the next thing the tenant automatically thinks is, well, if the landlord's got their agent, I'm going to get my agent. Mm-hmm. The problem is there's something called commission splitting, and they the your agent splits the commission with the other agent, but the they were all paid effectively by landlord dollars. Right, right, right. right? So now you got and two so, people to throw you under the bus instead of one. Well, that's very possible. You know, <laughs> a lot of people think it's a conflict of interest yeah. For, yeah. for this to go on, but it's perfectly legal. By the way, it's legal. Now, okay. I, I want, I want, I don't want to beat up on the on the real estate agents who are out there. I, I want, you know, I don't think the real estate agent is trying to hurt the tenant. I'm just not convinced they're trying to help the tenant. Right. And if right. you think the agent is trying to help you, you might be mistaken. Now up on your screen you can see some leasing incentives for agents. So if the agent convinces you to sign a lease, he <laughs> gets a hot tub or a motorcycle or a vacation, uh, right? Yeah. Now this is on top of his regular commission. Right. 
if if you look at the next slide, now this is a flyer that was sent out to all agents and brokers yeah. about outside agents, the agent you think is helping you. It's called the outside agent. Yeah. And it says to all outside agents, in addition to full fees, there will be a $5,000 leasing bonus given to the outside agent who closes a deal prior to July the 1st. Yeah. So if you're wondering why the agents are trying to convince you to do the deal, it might be because it serves them more than it serves you. Right, right. Now, here, here's another flyer, 8% leasing commission on the base rent to the agent, but the agent also gets a trip to Las Vegas as a bonus. Well, I think the tenant should get the trip to Las Vegas, not the right. agent. Right, okay? right. But these kind of leasing incentives are out there, and if you're taking your That's advice – you know, from uh, from the wrong person, it can lead you in the wrong direction. Here's a whopper: uh, yeah. the agent gets a brand new BMW <laughs> if they can get you to sign a lease agreement. So yeah. there's a lot of reasons for the agent to say, "Sign the lease, sign the lease, sign the lease." Yeah. Sometimes it takes someone like the lease coach to come along and say, "Hold on, right? Have you do you realize like there's a lot of reasons, Fred? We will stop a tenant from signing a lease." One of the top reasons is the space is too big mm -hmm. or too small, mm -hmm. right? And the tenants have this is the last space they have left. Yeah, but you don't. If you don't need 3,600 square feet, you don't right. need 3,600 right. square feet. This, you're paying your rent per square foot. That's their problem, right? not your problem, right? That's right. So there's yep. a lot of reasons we will put the brakes on. Um, you you just can't afford to get the lease wrong because you can't. It's not like buying a car. If you buy a car and realize you bought the wrong car, you can sell that car and buy a different one. You don't quite have that much flexibility with a commercial right. lease that's five right. or ten years in length. So I wrote this article called Realtor, Friend, or Foe. We'll send a copy. This, this appeared in one of the franchise magazines. We'll send a sure. copy along with the, the book to everybody that comes on. Great. Let's get back to our tips. Tip number six, why we ask for more than we want or need. Mm -hmm. So a franchise tenant calls me up and says, Dale, I, I've got three locations and I want to open three more in the next couple of years. He said, will you do all of my site selection? I said, of course I will. That's why we exist. So I go out and about three weeks later, I come back to him with a list of locations. Now he had given me one instruction because I knew his business. I knew the type of space he wanted, but he said, Dale, don't show me any locations where I can't get at least three months of free rent. That was his minimum requirement as an inducement. So I came back to him with the first location, and I said, I'd really like you to do this deal. I've crunched the numbers. I've met the landlord. Here's a proposal from the landlord. It all makes sense, but I did not get you three months of free rent. He said, I don't even want to look at it. I said, hold on, hold on. I said, I got you 12 months of free rent. It was a yeah. five-year lease, yeah. the first 12 months free. He said, how did you get me 12 months of free rent? Yeah. I said, I asked for 18. I asked right. for 18 months of free rent, Fred, and I got 12. Did I win yep. or did I lose? Yeah. See? Yeah. He, he would have asked for three months of free rent and gotten right. two or one and thought he did okay. Yep. Yep. The commercial real estate is a very negotiable forum. They, landlords expect you to negotiate. You mm -hmm. have to ask for more than you need or want mm -hmm. and you know and, and go from there and this, and this applies to whether it's a tenant allowance which is right. money that the landlord gives you as an inducement to help you build out your restaurant you don't have to pay it back it applies to free rent things like that so you you always want to and and this is really easy for me to say Fred because I'm not emotionally involved. I'm, I can be very objective. I can analyze the situation. The more the tenant loves the location, the less inducements they'll ask for because they don't right. want to lose it. Right, right, right. But you right. rarely lose a location because you asked for too much. Mm -hmm. They just say no. Mm -hmm. You just say no. And you but I, but you just brought up something too, which is really important, which is there's a tenancy in an industry like this. Um, somebody falls in love with their concept falls in love with the food that they're going to serve. So by nature, they fall in love with what appears to be the dream location that they must right. have. So it's sort of the next step in a long emotional uh, list, uh, totem pole, if you will. That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. Uh, tip number seven, which important lease clauses need to be renegotiated if you're selling your restaurant? So I do a lot of seminars on selling and buying a restaurant from a leasing perspective because mm -hmm. if you're selling your restaurant, 
you're either going to assign your lease agreement to the buyer or you're going to assign the lease agreement and the landlord's going to add a couple years on. Or the third choice is the landlord's going to enter into a brand new lease agreement with the buyer of your restaurant. So there's a couple different ways to, to skin that cat, if you will. And so um, when, when, you're, when you're buying or selling a restaurant, you want to negotiate the um, for more renewal options. Okay? Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you've got longer term that you can stay there. You want to, to renegotiate the assignment clause, um, the deposit clause, the personal guarantee clause. If, if I had one, if I could only warn tenants about one thing, Fred, it would be that damn personal guarantee. Okay, mm -hmm. and I, and I want to dwell on this for a second because I Please. I'm a, I'm a I'm a magnet for tenants with problems, mm -hmm. and so the the landlord says, well, I I need a personal guarantee, and I, I you know in case you don't pay the rent or anything like that. And so one of the examples I use, I usually when I'm speaking at a at a restaurant show and I'll say, now who, who here sells muffins in their restaurant? I, and somebody will put up their hand and I'll say, okay, if I come into your restaurant and I, I buy a muffin, and, uh, I, I order a muffin and a coffee and I eat them and I drink the coffee and then I get up and leave, you're pretty much screwed. You can't get that money from me. You, you, you've lost You've lost that, right? And they go, yeah, right. I've lost it. But I say, you know, if you, if you run a restaurant for four years and you pay your rent for four years, but suddenly you can't, there's a change or there's competition, yeah. and you can't pay your rent anymore, does the landlord lose the space? Of course not. The landlord gets the space back. Mm -hmm. Usually the landlord gets the space back in better condition than he gave it to you in. Mm -hmm. So. It's not right for the landlord to say, I need a personal guarantee in case you don't pay the rent. Because right. the minute that your restaurant closes, they're looking, and sometimes sooner, they're looking for a replacement tenant. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they'll find one. And if, yep. you, if you agree to pay a $200,000 penalty to get out of your lease, and the next month they sign up a new tenant, you're going to feel like a fool. Right. So right. personal guarantees are really dangerous. You've got to negotiate some of those things. Don't let your spouse get on the personal guarantee, you mm -hmm. know, if you do have one. And and they can really burn down over time. So there's a lot of uh So how often things. do you see how often do you see that as a deal breaker in, in the world that you live in and that you travel in? The only time it's a deal breaker is when the landlord has entered into an agreement with his mortgage holder that all of his tenants will give a personal guarantee. See, okay. the landlord okay. doesn't need a personal guarantee. So that's guarantee. what you need to know. So that's what you yes. need to know. That's okay. right. That's so what sometimes the know. landlord will say, I, I can't do a lease okay. with you without a personal guarantee. All right. So this but has nothing to do with you. This has to do no. with what his deal is. Okay. That's Got right. It. It's, a re it's a reflection of his. Um, right. Of where he know, is. Of where he is, not necessarily yep. where you are. Yeah. Uh, because we're doing deals with tenants that are spending. They're taking raw space. Like we just, we went out for lunch, Fred, a couple of weeks ago to one of our clients, they've opened up their third Brazilian steakhouse in four years called Pampa. Okay. And they've used our company to do their site selection, negotiate all their leases. And, you know, they took raw space and invested hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, if they went out of business, the landlord could actually rent their space to another restaurant for higher rent mm -hmm. because the infrastructure is already built. Right. right. Everything's in there. Yep. So, you know, it's not always bad news for the for the landlord. They don't always get get mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. so they really have to be careful. Now, okay. the bo the bonus tip that you see at the bottom of your page is get some help from a professional lease consultant. We we if you look back on number 5, we really didn't talk about the attorney, okay? People understand that the lease coach is different than a brokerage. At the lease coach, we work for the tenant and the tenant pays our fee. Tenants understand that brokers work for the landlord and the landlord pays their fee. But what mm -hmm. about the attorney? And I was speaking at a franchise show in Washington, D.C., had about 75 virgin tenants buying franchises and they were taking my workshop. And I said, um, uh, any questions? And one fellow said, well, do I, do I, he, he said it this way, he said, I need a, a real estate lawyer to review my lease, right? And I said, well, why do you think you need a real estate lawyer to review your lease? And he said, to make sure it's legal. 
And I said, well, you know, the legality of your lease really isn't in question. They're not sending you – these are professional landlords for the most part. They're not sending you leases filled with loopholes. Mm -hmm. this, this lease is perfectly legal. It's not about the legality. I said, if you hire a lawyer who – doesn't know what market rents are and you know doesn't have a lot of experience in this field a lot of them are really just working academically right right you know right. sometimes it's one lawyer in a large law firm they've never yep. even signed a lease for their firm yep right yeah it's so, a it's a, a boilerplate piece and 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 that's what you that's, end up with that's right and so often and i and i don't want to i i have nothing against lawyers i don't want this to sound right. negative but tenants will call me up and say my lawyer never explained that he never told me in so many words mm -hmm. this could happen and that could happen and i said but, mm -hmm. but he made sure your lease is legal right oh yeah it's legal yeah but he never warned me that you know um about my assignment clause or about this or about my exclusivity yep. clause okay yep. so um if you you know the only tenants that really come to the lease coach for help are those that don't want ex they don't want expenses. I don't want expenses. Fred, you don't want expenses in your business, but we're all willing to invest in our business. Right. And those are the types of tenants that come to us and say, look, before I spend three hundred thousand dollars opening up a restaurant, I'm going to spend a couple thousand and mm -hmm. get some coaching from the lease coach. Yep. So what you're seeing on your screen here, these are a couple of really swell guys. And, I'll, uh, and I'm standing in the middle, and I'm yeah. holding my second book because my Four Dummies book was actually my my third book. The, what, what I'm okay. holding is my second book. And what on the on the left we've got. Uh, oh, here we skipped the slide. There we go back. Okay. We may have these. Oh well. On the left is Mark Victor Hansen, and on the right is Jack Canfield. They are co-authors of Chicken sure. Soup for the Soul. Soup. Sure. So. I went to Costa Mesa, California, I before I had written my book and I thought, you know, I better I better th there's something to this book business. It's not good enough just to have the knowledge. You've got to get that. You've got to and writing a book doesn't do anybody any good if you can't get it on a bookshelf. Mhm. Mm right? Right. So I went I went to Mark Victor Hansen's writing boot camp in California and he told everybody that 25 publishers had turned down Chicken Soup for the Soul. Well, Chicken Soup for the Soul went on to do 120 million yep. copies, okay, yes. on various various covers. And I thought, well, who's going to publish my little book on real estate? So I made a very earnest uh, pledge to God, and I said, God, if you get my book published and into bookstores, I will donate all royalties to church and charity. Hmm. Now, I hadn't written the book yet, so I started yep. to write the book. I started yep. to phone publishers. I started to do my homework. Nine months later, my first book was literally in the bookstores. Wow. Okay? And since then, and see, this is what I mean about getting some professional help. Mm -hmm. You know, we all, you know, everybody needs professional help. You I did practice too. what you preach. That's right. And, you know, Fred, the blessing is that I'm doing exactly what – I should be doing with my career. I'm 55. I'm mm -hmm. at the top of my game, and I've been able to um, to uh, sponsor missions trips. I've been able to uh, help people with my royalty yeah. money. I've been able to replace the the library in my my previous uh, church, we did yeah. a new library. So it's a real blessing for me, and right. I'm really passionate about what I do because mm -hmm. this is not a job for me. This is a calling, mm -hmm. and that's and that's you know the side that my bread is buttered on so right i want i want i'm just going through my notes here to see what i want our our readers if you're seeing on your screen remember you're going to get a complimentary copy of our book 330 pages it is available mm -hmm. in barnes and noble as well now fred what you're seeing on your screen is the most common question i get asked by restaurant tenants what will it cost me to hire the lease coach and the answer, i think the, i think the question really ought to be what will it cost me not to hire you Based on the you're, stories that you just told. You're, you're like a mind reader. There you <laughs> no, are. What really. will it cost you if you don't hire the lease Right, coach? right, Because right. they leave so much on the yeah. table, and they make yeah. so many fundamental mistakes, yeah. and they, 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 they listen to pe people tell them things, and instead of getting those things put in writing, they forget about them until they wonder, hey, I thought I was supposed to get parking. Right. I thought I was right. supposed to have storage what happened? space. What, what happened? happened? Nobody wrote it down for me, right? So right. What, what we do, you know, um, oh, here's that one I was uh, mentioning to you about uh, Pampa and uh, wonderful clients. Like I said, they've opened three restaurants in four years. Their last restaurant was 8,000 square feet. So as you can imagine, it's not a small 
uh, no. venture. No. No. And, and we're uh, we're doing a lot of work for them as they expand their chain. Um, this next one is from a from a pizza client. He's he's a franchisee. Notice at the bottom it says. Uh, Jeff Granfield, who's my partner, Jeff Granfield and co-author of the book, renegotiated right. uh, his lease, the rental rate, his upcoming lease renewal, resulting in a savings of $100,000 so over that's 10 that's years. That's a million bucks over 10 years. Yeah. Well, no, $100,000 over 10 years. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, but the point is, we charged him about 5% of that. Got like it. it wasn't a percentage. We don't work on a percentage basis. But right. He, he paid us a few thousand dollars and he got right. this benefit. That's the way it's supposed to work. It's not like yep. you pay us a dollar and we save you a dollar. Right, right, you know? right, right. This, this, this is a favorite one of mine because it says, uh, so Darren owns seven of these restaurants. He's a, he's a franchisee, and he says, the lease coach negotiated one of our restaurant lease renewals and saved us $30,000 per year. On top of the financial benefit, yep. Dale's also a nice guy. Now, we did this mainly by negotiate, renegotiating his percentage rent. Because if you're a really successful restaurant owner, you're probably paying percentage rent. If you could lower mm-hmm. your percentage rent, you'd make a lot more money. And that's mm-hmm. what we did for him. Now, what's interesting is the way he thanked us. So after paying our fee, he thanked us by inviting us back to his home city to speak at the Restaurant Association event. Because nice. when you do good things for people, they do good things for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And that's really Absolutely. what it's all about. So Reap, reap, the, so, reap the seeds that we sow, as they say. That's right. A couple of really smart guys out of uh, Orlando that yep. uh, wanted to open up their first restaurant, hired us to do their site selection, yep. just uh, you know, going gangbusters. But, Fred, what you see on your screen here are the, su- the services that we provide. We do lease renewal rent reductions, mm-hmm. new location leases, sites. I've gone as far as Hawaii and, and New York and Florida to do site selection. Um, coaching and consulting, if you want to buy your building, we'll help you with that. We do a document review, a 39-point lease inspection that I think is better than anything I've ever seen a lawyer do because it speaks to the real concerns and future problems that tenant is going to see. It's not about the legality. It's about, you know, will will this location serve me for the next 5, 10, so, years, so give it, years? So without going into the third, all 39 points, take a couple of things that you would never think of that are shocking and amazing. Exclusivity clause. Okay. So here's here, here's a real life example for you. We get a call from a Ben and Jerry's franchisee, and he says, he says your company, the lease coach, put on a webinar for Ben and Jerry's, a leasing webinar, a while ago, and that's how I got your number. Mm-hmm. And he said, I, here's my problem. He says, in my lease agreement, I have an exclusivity clause, but the landlord called me and said they're going to put in a frozen yogurt store about three doors down from me. Now, that's going to cut into his business. I eat a fair bit of ice cream, I eat a fair bit of frozen yogurt, but I don't eat them in the same day. It's going to cut into his business. And I said, but you're telling me you've got an exclusivity clause. He said, that's right, and I can't figure out how they can do this to me. And I said, well, send me your lease. So he sends me his lease, and sure enough, right there in his lease, you know, because they're all in headings, it says exclusivity clause. But this is what it says, Fred. It says, the landlord will prohibit any other tenant from selling frozen desserts in the in the plaza. Period. Any other existing, However, any other existing no, tenant? No, no, and, and, any, any tenant. Any tenant, okay. any, tenant, any yeah. tenant from selling frozen desserts in the plaza, period. However, yeah. if the landlord does allow another tenant to sell frozen desserts, Ben & Jerry's has the right to terminate their lease. <laughs> And I said, well, that's not an exclusivity clause. That's a right of termination clause, right? Right, right. And he he said, said, I don't want to terminate. He said, I just spent $180,000 opening my Ben & Jerry's last year. Right, right, right. I don't want to terminate. I said, I know, but I said, who helped you with this? He said, well, the franchisor missed it. My lawyer missed it. Nobody explained to him that this wasn't what he thought it was. Right. Okay? And we would have checked that. You know, you, you know how this 39-point lease inspection started? I've got a couple of great daughters who I've bought several vehicles for. I really right. have some wonderful children. Yep. And I buy them a vehicle to help them get started. Yep. And every time I'm buying them a used vehicle, I have my, my buddy, my mechanic, inspect it. And he mm-hmm. does a complete inspection. He checks hoses, brake lights, you know, every, everything's checked. And in one particular case, the dealership said to me, you don't need to get your mechanic to check this vehicle. It's never been in an accident. It's pristine. I said, well, I'm paying for it, so I right. think I will. Right? Oh, this should be good. 
he comes, my, my, my mechanic comes back to me and he said it had a front end collision. Uh, and here's, here's the other things that are wrong with it. So I go back to the dealership. Now, yeah. I think they honestly made a mistake. Okay. They didn't check it. But the point is they still, mi- they still misrepresented it to me, and they were right. so embarrassed that they paid me back for the inspection I paid. Wow. Me. And then I wow. never bought the vehicle. Yeah. So even, you know. Even, even, well if, inten- even with good intentions that's is, is right. the point that it still doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Even with the best of intentions. That's it just right. doesn't matter. So, so wow. then we talk about doing space measurement and rent recapture because when you're renting your, your space per square foot, yeah. who's to say whether the measurement is correct? In fact, measurement discrepancies are so common, Fred, they have a name for it. It's called phantom space. Okay. And so, I mean, I, I've, I've had situations where tenants have had discrepancies that were 800 square feet. So the, ten- the tenant thought they had a 4,400-square-foot spot. We measured it. It was 3,600 square feet. Wow. They wow. were overpaying thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars because nobody wow. measured it. And, and sometimes when they measure it, they just measure it wrong. Like, you know, human beings are doing these measurements, and they can make mistakes. Yeah. Okay? So, you know, don't, don't take your, your space measurement for the guy. For granted. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Operating costs and auditing services, you know, if, if a tenant occupies 12% of a plaza, the landlord expects them to pay their proportionate share for maintenance. So mm-hmm. the tenant pays 12% for snow removal, 12% for they paint the building, 12% yep. if they fix the asphalt. And, and quite often, this is the number one way that they take advantage of tenants. Let's say the building is, is 14% vacant. Well, the landlord is supposed to eat 14% of the costs. It's like mm-hmm. the landlord is the tenant of the vacant space, right? But they mm-hmm. don't do that. What they do is they take 100% of the snow removal and charge it back to the 86% of the tenants that are there, and that's wrong. And that's what we catch them doing. The Got landlord it. is the landlord is supposed to pay for the vacant space, not the tenant. And mm-hmm. when it gets into when it gets into property taxes, that's really high. That can be a lot of money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that's what we do there. Business brokerage, if you're buying or selling your restaurant, uh, we can help you with that, especially when it yep. comes to the lease. And lease assignment. So I, I had a call from a tenant, and he said, um, you spoke at our event over a year ago. You won't remember me, but I, he said, um, I want, I'm selling my business. I have a buyer, and I want you to help me through the process with the landlord. And I said, well, you sound like there's more to this story. And, and, and he said, well, yeah. I said, I had my business sold six months ago, and the landlord took so long, like they took well past 30 days, up to 45 days to even respond, that the buyer walked away. The buyer got tired of waiting. Wow. Demanded his deposit back and walked away. Wow. Well, if you've got someone buying your restaurant, they're not going to wait forever. <laughs> nope. Right? The, nope. Landlord, the landlord will use this opportunity to try and increase the deposit, increase the personal guarantee, increase mm-hmm. the rent. So you have to be very savvy and very careful. And, you know, every one of the franchise logos that you see on your screen here, uh, there's a whopper of a story. All Got kinds it. of situations. Some yep. of these franchise chains have used us 20, 30 times, and some of them are food service and some of them aren't. Right, um, right. You know, I was speaking at a restaurant show recently, and somebody came up to me and he said, yeah, you know, I don't own a restaurant. I own a, I own a different kind of business. Can, I, can you help me? And I said, sure, yeah, sure, of course yep. you can. You know, restaurants are more complicated. But anyway, so let's look. Oh, there's a little um, glitch on the slide here, but these sure. are the service packages that we offer. We offer a package one as our coaching and consulting package. So okay. all of these are on a 12-month project basis. Okay, So you hire us. It's one project. You pay yep. $291 per month, and we coach you and review all your documents. We're effectively your mentor, and we're the ones explaining everything to you and sorting sure. out the good from the bad. Yep. Package number two is a negotiating package. It's $541 per month for 12 months, and we are taking charge. We are now doing the negotiating for you. Mm -hmm. Fred, I thought when I started the lease coach back in 1993, I thought package number one would be our most popular. It's our least expensive. Everybody needs some coaching and some guidance. Everybody needs a document review. But most of our clients want package two where we actually do the work for them. And it's because there's so much money at stake. They only do it yeah. every five or ten years. Yeah. 
And package one is a little bit like me telling you how to swing the golf club. Package yeah. two is me swinging the golf club for you, and the results right. are going to be dramatically different. Right. And, all, package, and, what it, and, and also what it tells me is that when somebody comes to you and is looking for you, there's an issue. There's a problem. That, there's something going right. on. You know, the, you, right. know, you don't wake up in the morning. Unfortunately, you know, it's like the pay me now, pay me later with yep. the old muffler thing. You don't wake up in the morning and go, gee, you know what? I think today I'll look at my lease. I mean, there's something going on. That's right. That's and right. you're responding to it. And so then we've got package three, which includes site selection. Now, uh, site selection has to be done boots on the ground. It's not done by just going to websites right. and things like that. Right. We literally right. fly to that location, yep. rent a car, spend a couple days, and then we take care of the entire leasing process. Now, the document review, which you can see at the bottom, that's included in all of those packages, but sometimes a tenant comes to us and they're so far advanced in their deal that they say, you know, we've pretty much got it all negotiated, but I do want you to give me that 39-point lease inspection. Mm -hmm. And so they pay for that, and that's what we do for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but well worth a, a tenant's money. Now, remember, when you hire the lease coach, there's no time limit. You make We take the project fee, we divide it into 12 payments, and and, and 12 payments is a special for this webinar. Typically, it's six payments because it takes okay. about six months to do a project. But we wanted to do something a little special. So if, nice. if, you're, if you're coming to us and you say, well, I thought it was 12 or six, well, we'll work with yep. you. We work on multiple locations simultaneously because we want to create competition for your tenancy. So if you're, if you're hiring us to do a lease renewal, I'm going to say to you, where would you move if you had to move? Where would you move if you couldn't stay here? I want to right. make you pick some locations so we can make the landlord earn, re-earn your tenancy. Now, you make progress payments while the work is being done, and most importantly at the bottom, the lease coach takes no payment from the landlord. So if I tell you something, you mm -hmm. can bank on it because I have no other master but the tenant. Right, right. I'm not trying right. to serve anybody, not trying to please anybody else. And, you know, we don't beat these landlords up. That's not our style. We're not arrogant, but we are assertive. We are aggressive. We we know who we're representing, and it's the mm -hmm. tenant. We, if I have to choose between getting the tenant a rent reduction or getting him a date with the landlord's daughter, we're going to go for mm -hmm. the rent reduction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, there's, you can have there's, you got you probably got lots of friends. Your landlord's right. not your friend. I don't want your landlord to be your enemy, but I right. don't want you to be. You've got to look at this. And, if your rent is too high, that's the number one reason you're not going to be able to sell your restaurant. Mm -hmm. So yep. we've got to get your rent in shape. Okay. So we're, we're going to wrap it up here. Typically, we would do a Q&A session, but this, this webinar is being pre-recorded. Right. And so I want to invite the listeners to send me an email, book a free 30-minute consult, make sure you get a copy of my four dummies book of the book yeah and let's talk about your project and don't forget to keep reading total foods because fred you were telling me before the call how many years has total foods been out there now 27 years 27 years fantastic yep. publication thank you yeah fantastic can't thank you enough for taking the time to, to teach us you know the and it's funny the question you just answered my my really my only question which is you know when you think of new york you think of tough, you think of abrasive, you think of arrogant. Mm -hmm. And my question was going to be, I mean, you're not a New Yorker. You have operated in New York successfully. You know, why should somebody here locally bring in somebody from out of town to help them with something as complex and as, as important as this? And obviously, your expertise and your background are, 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 the, are the answer to that. But more than that, I like what you just said, which is, you know, you're not looking to create a friendship with the with the with the landlord. You're looking to provide a very very important service. That's right. That's right. You know. It's really important for tenants to remember that in, in leasing restaurant tenants don't get what they deserve; they get what they negotiate. So, mm -hmm. so, so let's wrap it up for today. If we're all Great. done, Fred, and I appreciate your time, and we'll, I'll see you at the next restaurant show. Thank you, sir. Take care. Bye for now. Be well. Bye bye. Thank you.